Okay, we're back, and now we're on example three. We're going to uh, calculate weighted average number of shares outstanding with no stock split, so we're just sticking our toe in the water. <clears throat> um, we're going to start on 1-1. One, one. Sometimes it says 1231. That's the same. Um, and we have to, when you, this is a, a table that really helps in organizing all the information. So um, what can I say? I usually like to start with the dates, so I'll look around March 1, July 1, October 1, so March 1, July 1, October 1, I don't see any other dates, okay? It says we start with 200,000 on March 1, we repurchase 15,000, so that's 185. On July 1, we issue 50,000. So that's 235, and they sell 10,000 out of Treasury, which increases outstanding by 10,000. Okay, now, how many months of the year is it outstanding? The first row is January, February. Okay, there is a three here, so you might be tempted to say three, but three, one. So as of the end of February, we're starting with the 185. So for row two, we have March, April, May, June. And then row three starts July. So March, April, May, June. That's where the four twelves come from. The third row, we have July, August, September. That's three. And for the fourth row, October, November, December, that's three as well. Finally, the way you check this whole column is 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 3 is 9, plus 3 is 12. Every weighting, the sum of the weights should equal 1. So that's okay. That checks out. So you might find a few errors this way. All right, so now what do we do? We have our shares outstanding. Multiply it times a fraction of the year outstanding. Multiply by a stock dividend or stock adjustment factor, which I don't have here, but I wanted to include for completeness. And that equals this row's contributing portion to the total that we add up down here. So the weighted, basic weighted average number of shares outstanding, 215,000. All right. So what do we do with stock splits or stock dividends? GAP says act as if the stock split or the stock dividend occurred at the beginning of the year. So, um, in this set of facts, we have a January 1 start with 200,000. They repurchase 15,000. They issue 50. And on October 1, the company splits 3 to 1. So, this is three times right here. It goes from 235 to 705. And it increased two times, right? So this is two times. Add the one base to double the change, you get 705. Okay, so the way this table works though, yikes, this is the split row. Right here, this is where the split occurs. Put the split in the table as a stock event, a stock issuance event. Then multiply every row above the stock split or stock dividend by the stock split or stock dividend adjustment factor. I am speaking in a ridiculous tone of voice because this is one of those things that people don't believe me. They'll start thinking, and thinking is great, except sometimes it gets in the way of calculating the right number. So take every row above the stock split or stock dividend and multiply by the stock split or stock dividend adjustment factor. I am not lying. So we had a three for one split down here And every row above that split, we're multiplying by 3. All right, so what's happening here? We have 705 
Outstanding as of October. Oh, no. Okay, no biggie. Let me get back in there to full screen. Where'd you go? Okay, we're back. And we're back. So if we did what Gap said and adjusted as if the stock split or stock dividend occurred at the beginning of the year, then I have what I have down here. Instead of 200000 see the 200000 way up here? You have 600000 because 3 times 200000 is 600000 And instead of buying back 45,000 shares, you would have bought back 45,000 shares. And instead of issuing 50,000 shares, you would have issued 150,000 shares. Okay, but we don't have to... This... Uh, these are tough to remember, right? You got to remember every single change. <clears throat> Instead, I am suggesting that you should use this column for stock split or stock dividend adjustment factor and continue with that. Now, you may say, Professor Sierra, what if we had a two for one split in November? I would multiply every row above the stock split or stock dividend by the adjustment factor. So if in November we had a two for one split, I would do this. All right. So I was not lying. But we don't have that, so let me erase it. Okay, so this is equal, equal, equal. Equal, and we have 637,500 shares outstanding. All right. So putting it all together, we've already seen it before, but 1.2 million net income, 300,000 is the um, current year because it's cumulative, and then we just calculated the weighted average number of shares outstanding. All right. So those are some basics on how to calculate the weighted average number of shares and uh, basic EPS. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we're going to get into uh, diluted EPS on the next uh, next example.